This is Jim Brewer. If you're unfamiliar, he's a comedian who would, you know, was probably most famous back in his SNL days. I think the 2000s. I actually watched him a lot when I was younger, and uh, he was. I guess you could say he was some, uh, something of a hero to me. I mean, I really liked his stuff back then, long and long ago. Well, look where he is now. He is at a Reawaken America tour, a QAnon tour, espousing QAnon ideas and trying to convince the crowd that QAnon is real. And sadly, the ideas that he's espousing right now, they're not even funny. He's not even presenting them as jokes. He's just saying, I know Biden is a lizard person. I know he's a lizard person. I'm just trying to get people to tell me he's a lizard person. It's like, I thought we were going to, like, tell jokes here. Isn't that, like, your whole thing? Aren't you supposed to tell jokes? Tell me a joke, funny man. Make me laugh. Anyways, uh, we listened to this. This isn't the first part. If you didn't see it, don't sweat it. This stands independently of the rest. I'll provide context if it's missing. But uh, anyway, yeah, let's give this a listen. See what he has to say for himself. And while we do, we're going to play some Breath of the Wild 1. Just kind of going through, doing whatever. Something to do while I listen to Nutter Butters spread their Nutter Buttery all over everything. All right, let's get into it, shall we? Out there. Oh, yeah, that was his Metallica impression. Okay, let me step back, listen again. Now, we all watch with our own two eyes every other night Metallica, whether you like them or not. Big Metallica fan right here. Huge Metallica fan. He's about to argue that the 2020 election was really stolen. I'm sure you can already see where this is going when he's talking about big crowds listening to Metallica, right? Okay, keep listening here. 40,000 people showing up. I don't even know who Metallica is, but I, I, I'm, I'm into the band. I was a- Are we sure it's 40,000? Metallica is famous for having the largest concert ever in history. Let me look it up. There's a picture of it. 1.6 million people showed up on September 28th, 1990 at the very tail end of the Cold War in Moscow in an abandoned airfield, and Metallica played to 1.6 million people. There's a picture of it. Let me show you. It's massive. They had to use a wide-angle lens to capture everybody, so it looks curved because, you know, that it's a fisheye lens. That's what fisheye lenses do. Here you go. Wide-angle shot. Here's a... Uh, 1.6 million people. 1.6 million. Metallica played it. That's crazy, right? Oh, my God. God, Metallica is the best ever. Uh, they're not the best ever. I mean, they're good, but there are some better bands. Pantera's good. I like them a lot. Uh, you know, I mean, there are there are a variety of good bands out there. All right, let's keep listening. So... 40,000 people is nothing, honestly. In in Metallica terms, 40,000 is nothing. 40,000 people showing up. I don't even know who Metallica is, but I, I'm, I'm into the band. I was afraid to go to the Metallica concert. They went to Metallica concert. Nobody got hurt. Everyone left in a good mood. They came out there. Yeah! Yeah! Metallica! Yeah! That's a really good impression of Metallica, actually. I don't know how he came up with that impression, but that's on point. Dude, 1.6 million people is so many. That's like three large cities combined. How did they even find 1.6 million people in Moscow to go to this concert? It's crazy. 1.6 million? Uh, In all seriousness, that is the size of Manhattan. That is how many people are on Manhattan Island, or who live on Manhattan Island. At any given moment, there are three to four million on the island, you know, tourists and everything. But 1.6 million live here. Anyways, he's about to get to a point. Did you notice what he said there a second ago? Everybody goes there. They have a good time. Everyone goes home happy and nobody gets hurt. Remember that. Nobody gets hurt. Okay? Keep listening. Now we... Oh, see, now some of you know. Okay. You know the one song. Exit Life. Enter Sandman. That's a good song. Enter Nighter. Rock the Never Never Life. Those those are bad impressions. The yeah thing was really good. This one isn't. I actually. Yeah, yeah. I I used to love 
I actually loved the band Metallica when I was younger, but they were they came out that that band scared me to death. They did because they came out in the mid '80s when they were already trying to brainwash a new generation with MTV. Oh my God, dude! Come on. MTV was like, let's start making the boys look like girls, and it'll be a subliminal missing. And eventually, they will, 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 will tell them how to dress. And I'll give you an example. See, this is what I'm talking about. Make me laugh, funny man. You're supposed to be funny. What happened? You're being preachy and ridiculous. This isn't interesting or funny at all, and it's nonsense. Seriously. Do you not remember your parents coming up and saying... They were sick of hearing all these kids' music and kids these days. Or blah, 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 blah. Don't you remember that? How is it that you have found yourself in this exact position, you know, all these years later, where now you are saying kids these days? You know, I got a couple of quotes for you. Talked about this a while back on my Fireside Chat channel. Let me lay these quotes down for you. So a while back, there was this conference that took place the National Association of Christian Lawmakers, right? And this this pastor, E.W. Jackson, he shows up there and starts complaining about the fact that gay doesn't mean happy anymore. Now it means homosexual. And he refuses to say the word gay. He's always going to use the word homosexual because it doesn't mean blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh my God, dude, come on. So I want to I wanna lay a few quotes down for you, okay? I want you to listen to a few quotes... And guess which televangelist said it, all right? Guess which one said this. Was it Greg Locke, E.W. Jackson, Candace Taylor, or Kenneth Copeland? Women dress like prostitutes. It's like there's no social restraint anymore. The world sets the tone in society today. Who said that? Which of those pastors, you think? It was none of them! It was Oswald Spangler, Spangler, 1933. That's who said that. Women painted like prostitutes, throwing off every kind of social restraint. All of these go to prove that it is now the vulgar mob that gives the tone. All right, seriously, let's, for real, let's, let's do this, okay? I've got, I've got a real quote for you from a real nutcase. Now, you tell me which nutcase it is. E.W. Jackson, Greg Locke, Candace Taylor, Kenneth Copeland, all right? Those are the four options, A, B, C, D. Entertainment today is consuming and poisoning people's mind and corrupting the morals of children. A, B, C, or D? Got you again, motherfucker! It's none of them! It was Reverend Enos Hitchcock, 1790. That's who said that shit. The free access which many young people have to romances, novels, those damn books. People are reading books today. It's just wrong. Romances, novels, and plays. God, they're getting into relationships, they're reading, and they're watching plays? Complete scumbags today, huh? It's poisoned the mind and corrupted the morals of many a promising youth. Seriously. All right, let me give you one more, okay? Just one more. A, B, C, or D. Greg Locke, Candace Taylor, Kenneth Copeland, E.W. Jackson, in that order this time. Which one? The clothes people wear is getting more debased as we go. And the language people use is obscene. None of them, of course. 1330, Yoshida Kenko. That's who said that shit. So I don't want to hear any of this BS from Jim Brewer about how kids these days are getting into shenaniganery and all this other nonsense. Come on. Ridiculous. Look like girls and it'll be a subliminal missing. And eventually, they will, 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 will tell them how to dress. And I'll give you an example. Dude, he really nailed that southern plantation owner drawl, didn't he? You had Duran Duran. If you don't know, they were another band. I'm not really a fan. Not as funny if you don't know who they are. That's what was pop. You had, you had Madonna. I know Madonna, but I didn't listen to her stuff. So again, I don't get it. Not as funny if you don't get it. I, I get why he chose Madonna, though. She was like, isn't she like the one of the highest selling artists of all time or something? Next to like the Beatles and Eminem or I don't even remember now. 
But she sold a lot of albums. Oh my god. Like a virgin. Oh, he's singing like a virgin. Okay, I know that song. Like a virgin. Girls on them. And Metallica came out. Four kids. Dude, this isn't as funny when you don't have music and nobody knows the song. Come on, man. Like, make me laugh, funny man. Girls on them. And Metallica came out, four kids, angry. Couldn't get on the radio, couldn't get on television. Just coming out, <laughs> pissed, <laughs> mad, <laughs> angry. Oh, dude, honestly, seriously, that's a really good Metallica impression. <laughs> good Lord. <laughs> Take a look to the sky just before you die. It's the last time you will. Good Lord, what are they singing about? What was that song? Was that one? I think that was one. The song one. Let me think for a second. Or was that was that Battery or what was that? I know I have listened to and am a huge fan of every single Metallica song on every single album up to but not including Loaded or Reloaded. I I didn't really like either of them. I like a couple song, like Whiskey in the Jar was decent, but... Oh, For Whom the Bell Tolls. Oh my god, For Whom the Bell Tolls. That's what that was. Constant chill deep inside. Shouting gun, on they run through the endless gray. On they fight for the right, yes, but who's to say? For a hill men would kill. Why? They do not know. Stiffened wounds test their pride. Men of five still alive through the raging glow. Gone insane from the pain that they surely know. For whom the bell tolls, time marches on. I always get confused because for whom the bell tolls starts out exactly the same way as ACDC's Hell's Bells. The same exact sound effect, the bell toll. Uh, so for whom the bell tolls tells the story of Robert Jordan, a young American volunteer attached to a Republican guerrilla unit during the Spanish Civil War as a di... A Wait. As a dynamiter, he is assigned to blow up a bridge during an attack on the city of... Segovia. Uh, Republican had a different meaning at the time, not not the Republicans we know and love today. Aside from all that, they did a song about a guy. He was blinded, deafened, and oh my god, he lost a bunch of senses and he lost his arms and legs in the war. I forget exactly who he was or what happened, but he lost everything. He couldn't communicate with the outside world. The song was called One. He stepped on a landmine, and it destroyed him, and he just laid there in the hospital bed, unable to communicate with the outside world at all, locked in his head after losing his arms, his legs, and his mind. One by Metallica. Fantastic song. Anyway, uh, yeah, Metallica is just on point, dude. I love Metallica. Is this dude talking shit about Metallica? You don't want to go down this road, bro. I will go to bat for Metallica. <laughs> Take a look to the sky just before you die. It's the last time you will. Good mm, ha that's for whom the bell tolls, yeah. Good Lord, what are they singing about? Right. They're, they're singing about war heroes. That's what they're singing about. This is probably the wrong crowd to talk smack about war heroes to, right? I actually got to tour with them a couple years ago. Now they're in their 60s, great band. Not angry anymore because they're 60 and billionaires, so it's kind of hard. Fair enough. To be that angry when you're billionaires and 60. You know, it's the same with Eminem, you know. Eminem got famous because he connected with people. They understood what he was feeling, what he's going through, you know. Wife cheated on him. Mom was a piece of shit. Treated him like garbage, and he was raising his kid alone with no help. Completely alone. I 100% connect to and relate with that, right? But Eminem is filthy rich now. It's not like he has to, like, take his kid to a daycare and drop her off and then go to work for 10 hours a day. The kid is at a daycare for 12 hours a day because it takes time for you to get to the daycare and then to work and then home. I, sh I did that shit. That was me. Eminem doesn't have to do that shit anymore. So, yeah. I guess he's right there. It's kind of hard to be angry when you're so filthy rich, right? 
still good if you ever get to see him. Just not angry, you know, more like <laughs> cranky. Okay, that's funny. <laughs> Moody. Yeah, tired, tired. Who's tired? That's funny. One of them, actually, was it James Hatfield, the guitarist? I don't remember. Went to rehab not too long ago because he, uh, he, uh, he had an addiction. Was it like Coke or something? I don't remember. And he got out not too long ago, and they started touring again. They canceled their tour because of rehab. Hard respect, man. Seriously, hard respect. Yeah! Want to take a nap? Let's take a nap. There's a song about napping. Yeah! All right, that's good. That's good. I That... Yeah, he's got their inflection down perfectly. James Hatfield's. He's got, his, he's got James Hatfield's inflection down to a T. <laughs> the point of what I'm trying to say is they're sold out every night. 40,000 people playing stadiums. Trump arenas every night. 20,000, 30,000, 40,000. Nah, that's not true. Trump doesn't get 30, 40,000. Notice he started at 20,000, maybe. 10, 20,000, I'd say. Trump probably brings those people in. But it's all the same people every single night, every single show for Trump. You know, Metallica can go to L.A. and New York City and Sydney, Australia and wherever and play to a crowd, a different crowd every single night. But Trump ends up going to these venues and sees the exact same people in the front row every single time. He sees the exact same people all the way from the front to the back. Because they follow him around. They go on tour with Trump. Seriously. It's specifically uh, one of the groups that does this. It's called Negative 48. It's a QAnon group called Negative 48. They got their name through this complicated Jewish tradition of the thing called Gamatria. Anyway. Yeah, they're just, like, obsessed with Trump. These people are obsessed with Trump. Now, don't get me wrong. I love Metallica, but I would not follow them from New York City to L.A. to Sydney. Okay? If they come to New York City, I'll go. Maybe. I'll certainly buy their albums, listen to every song on it. But I'm not following them across the country or the world. These people follow Trump everywhere. Every night, whether you like them or not. I like Loverboy, but no offense. They're in their basement. I don't know Loverboy, and that's a jab at Biden. As it, like, what does that even mean, in their, in the basement? Like, Biden was in a basement. Was Trump not in a basement? I was in a basement once. Haven't people been in basements? Once in a while, they show up in a mall, and they're six feet apart with 11 people. I'm sure it's not all the same people every night. They probably get enough locals to populate a half-ass karaoke night. You're right. They pre- I mean, it's not all the same people. You're right. You're right, absolutely. But it is a lot of the same people for Donald Trump. Seriously. Uh, you know how I know? Because I see the same ones. Like, I follow Trump rallies, and I see the exact same people at every single one of them. And they get interviewed at every one of them. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. I have a, a gigantic clips collection full of people who go to these Trump rallies and interview them. This is a negative 48 guy right here. You can see on his shirt, his shirt says negative 48. It's an old Jewish tradition where you take the first letter in the alphabet and make that equal one, second letter equals two, third letter equals three. And then it's complicated. So it's a, it's a complex puzzle that you're doing, right? The 10th letter equals 10, the 11th letter is 20, the 12th letter is 30, and you keep adding it up like that. This is originally something that was done in Hebrew. It was never used for prophecy, and either way is kind of invalidated for that use no matter what, because Hebrew is like the original language, right? It was the language that God gave to the Israelites or whatever. That's the idea. So English, doing this with English just leads to complete nonsense. Usually it was a a puzzle where you'd have a number on one side and you'd have a phrase on the other and you'd have to calculate out what that thing meant. Like somebody with good morals and an honest person, that'd be on the left side. And then on the right, you'd have a number like 755 or something. And you would 
figure out which word added up to 755 using that calculation. You know, it's, that's gematria. Usually just something that they do for bar mitzvah boys or whatever. Just give them these little puzzles as a gift. Kind of fun, you know. Well, QAnon took that idea of gematria and turned it into full-blown prophecy in, in English. They're using the English language, not Hebrew, but English, to turn this whole thing into prophecy. 48, the gematria for 48, is evil. E-V-I-L. And these people claim to be the negative of 48. They are negating 48. They're negating evil. They're destroying it, if you will. That's the idea. That's why they call themselves negative 48. QAnon group follows Trump around tour, do anything for the guy. It's embarrassing. Tell us about it. What is what is negative 48? Okay, well, negative 48 is Michael Brian Protzman. Michael Brian Protzman is the guy who started the QAnon group. He died recently, actually. He is teaching Gematria, Michael Jackson. Gematria, Gematria, my God, man. Gematria, Michael Jackson sang about it. A, B, C, easiest one, two, three. A, B, C, and one, two, three rhyme. That's why Michael Jackson sang about it, okay? Michael Jackson didn't know anything about Gematria, I would be willing to bet. He's, he grew up Jehovah's Witness. Why would he know anything about Gematria? And so what, what is Gematria exactly? A, B, C, one, two, three. A, E, B, and one, and Z, B, and 26. So Michael Jackson, was he part of negative 48? No, but he is, uh... You keep saying is. Is he, is he... He's alive, brother. Michael Jackson's not dead. Michael Jackson is alive. Yes. Seriously, these are the people following Trump around on tour, okay? This is who we're dealing with. Not the sharpest tax in the box, or not the sharpest tax in the, in, like, in the bag, all right? These people need help, for real. Absolutely. Okay, let, let's bring, no, let's no, bring no. him back. This is real, by the way. People wonder, like, is, is this fake? Is this staged? Are these people for real? Are they just making this stuff up to get famous? No, this is 100% completely and totally real. Back here for a second. JFK who, who do you is think? not dead. <laughs> really? JFK is not dead. He was resurrected four days later as Jesus Christ. Just like Wait. Lazarus. Okay, Jesus was resurrected three days later, not four days later. What? Yeah, bro, JFK deep, was man. resurrected as Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Absolutely. And he is your president. And Junior is your vice president. JFK is the president. JFK Jr. is the vice president. JFK Jr. died in 1994. As we speak. As we speak right now, JFK Sr. is president and JFK Jr. is vice president. Absolutely. This is not a joke, guys. These are the people that follow Trump around on tour everywhere. Go everywhere with the guy. I see this dude at every single rally, for real. And uh, earlier, Jim Brewer said something like, everybody shows up and they go home happy and they're healthy and they're fine and everyone else is hiding. That's simply, you know what? I don't even need to disagree. I will let QAnoners disagree with that one. The Reawaken America Tour, the one that Jim Brewer is speaking at right now, got sick with COVID and a bunch of famous QAnoners who spoke there died. And the crowd blamed an anthrax attack. They said COVID can't, it's not real, it's fake. So it must have been an anthrax attack by the deep state. No joke. This really happened. This is on Vice, Vice News. A group of unvaccinated people who attended a huge conspiracy conference in Dallas earlier this month. This happened in, uh, when was this? Uh, December 2021. That's when this happened. Two years ago. Actually, it's two years ago to the day. Wow, that's crazy. Anyway, people in Dallas earlier this month all became sick in the days after the event with symptoms like coughing, shortness of breath, and fever. Instead of blaming the global COVID pandemic, however, the conspiracy theorists think they were attacked with anthrax. This is 100% real. This far-right conspiracy claim began after a dozen people spent time together in a confined space at the Reawaken America Tour event in Dallas over the weekend of December 10th. A dozen people spent a lot, or there were a lot more there than just 12 people. It was a big event. The fact that this is likely a COVID outbreak and super spreader event has been almost entirely ignored. No, it definitely was that thing. It wasn't likely that thing. It was. It was verified after a couple of the people died. So December 10th is when the event happened. This came out the 22nd, 12 days later. People hadn't died yet. 
it took a little more time before they died. Famous QAnon influencers died of COVID at this event. And Jim Brewer here is making it out like everybody just left happy and healthy and fine, leaving Donald Trump's events just fine. Nothing to worry about. Like, this is this is... This isn't even true for the event that he is at right now, let alone Donald Trump's events. This is insane. And at the end of the year, they go, love a boy, one band of the year. Oh, okay. And don't question it. I don't know who's saying that, but okay. Or you're an extremist. (laughs) Now he's pretending that Donald I'm sorry. Now he's pretending that QAnoners are not extremists. Great. Okay. Keep thinking that, Jim. We've been taken over. And it's blatant. It's in your face. That's what the whole even the, uh, you know, drag queens. No one had issues with drag queens. Yeah, nobody cares. Why would anybody care what other people are doing with their lives? Except for the fact that Republicans are obsessed with drag queens. Won't shut up about it. I've been to Vegas a billion times. They're there, they're dancing, they've been touring forever. I've, I've, we've all, every man in here is dressed like a chick at least once. That's never happened to me, but okay. Don't pretend, even General Flynn, everyone, absolutely. Uh, He's not a general. Absolutely. Don't pretend you haven't. We've all been to that party. And it's fun. It's like going to Halloween. This is a lot of fun. I don't think I can walk in the hills. And then you then you respect women more. Like, oh my god, my feet are killing me. My my yeah, back Yeah, I don't know why women would ever wear heels, honestly. Why would anybody ever do that? That sounds terrible. Seriously. Fat is on fire. How do you ladies do that? Hmm? Oh my god, the lipstick is disgusting. How do you not lick it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I agree. Yes, he's on point here. <laughs> but then they went after our kids. Who went after your kids, Jim? What are you talking about? Who is they? Are they in the room with us right now? And they actually wanted you to make you feel like you were in the wrong if you pushed back. Nobody's going after kids. What the hell are you talking about? Think about that. Think about that. If it wasn't a school, you were just hey, See, let's pretend you're in your yard. What school? What is he talking? I don't know. What does he think happened at schools? Does he think that kids are being taught to be trans at schools? Is that what this guy believes? This is Doug Mastriano, early October 2022, gubernatorial candidate for Pennsylvania. He almost got the governor position. He was he was too close for comfort. I think he got like 40% of the vote or something like that. On day one, the sexualization of our kids, pole dancing, and all this other crap that's going on will be forbidden in our schools. Pole dancing in schools. He thinks that there's pole dancing in schools. I I assume that Jim Brewer also believes that there's pole dancing in schools, right? Based on what he's saying here? On day one, all the graphic, pornographic books that are in elementary schools will be will be pulled out he thinks that they're like giving porn to kids basically that's what he's saying he's trying to think about a better way to phrase that there just isn't one he thinks that's what they're giving to kids really on day one and done critical race theory is out the window Uh, they're not teaching never were ever teaching critical race theory to children It's like a graduate level course. And I think it's just critical theory is what it's called. Oh, it is critical race theory and being told. Okay, I thought it was critical theory. And then there was like a race portion of that along with. Okay, I guess there is a full on critical race theory. That's true. 
Anyway, they're not showing it to kids. They're not teaching this stuff to kids. It's a graduate level course. My wife is in uh, law school, so that's where they're teaching critical race theory. Anyway, just insane. They're not teaching this stuff to kids, okay? It's not happening. Come back to reality with the rest of us. Hey, you got your grandkids hanging out, or your nieces and nephews. And some guy came in the backyard dressed, you know, they got a banana hammock. Um, a banana hammock? Yeah, is this guy from Germany? Like, what? Is he European? Why are they wearing that? I'm not sure what he's talking about, even. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I don't. I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. Your first instinct is this human being's disturbed. Why would that be your first instinct? Maybe this person just living their life and doing their thing. I mean, he's talking about in this fictional scenario where some guy walks into your backyard and I don't know, he didn't go into detail. So I don't know what he thinks is happening here. And think about this. No one even touched upon this. How sad does your life become if that's where you're at? No one even touched with the common sense. Common sense. If I want to be a drag queen person, I'm shooting for Vegas. I want to be the Venetian. I want to be Zelensky. Um, I, oh, 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 yeah. So Zelensky was a comedian before becoming a, uh, you know, be, be, before he's voted in as like the president of Ukraine. So I guess he's saying I want to be Zelensky, like, and I want to be a drag queen. I want to be Zelensky level drag queen. Okay, great. I don't know what this is. Go home and Google the video. It's there for everyone to see. That's where all our money's going to this guy. Well, he was a comedian. And look, Jim is literally doing this right now. He is literally acting out what he's complaining about somebody else doing, which is to say crawling on the floor. You're not supposed to crawl on the floor, apparently, in a comedy routine. Uh, he says, as he crawls on the floor in a comedy routine, first of all. And second, our money isn't going to Zelensky. Our money is going to stopping a historical adversary, Russia. And it, it's the best money we've ever spent. You know why? Half the money we're spending isn't even cash. It's not even money. It's in supplies, old supplies, that we're sending over that had to be replenished anyways. You're going to throw them away otherwise. Things like meals ready to eat, you know, MREs that were going to expire. We have to replace those every, like, I don't know, five years or something. How long do MREs last before expiring? Yeah, one to five years. MREs have a shelf life of one to... Alexa, stop. MREs have a shelf life of one to five years. So we have to produce those and have them ready to go, say... 15 million of them to supply, I don't know, a million troops or something for a while when they're out. And then every one to five years, completely replace the supply of MREs, throw them away. Instead, we're sending them to Ukraine to stop a historical adversary, not somebody that I view as an adversary, somebody that Putin views as an adversary. He fucking hates Americans and America generally. He has since he was in the KGB, okay? So I don't want to hear any of this nonsense about Zelensky being a bad guy and taking all our money and blah, blah, blah. It's garbage. All of it is garbage. The money could not possibly be better spent in Ukraine. He needs more money. Uh, this guy, I'm sorry, man. Jim Brewer watched one of my one of my videos on him and responded to me. So I never know if I know he sits there Googling his name. That's what I know. And I know that my channel pops up when he does that. His YouTube channel where he Googles stuff probably has my videos that pop up from time to time since he saw one of them already if you watch one you're going to get suggested others especially 
if it has your name in it, right? So I don't want to be a jerk to Jim because he very well could be watching this. I feel for Jim for being so completely sucked into this and brainwashed. But, bro, this is bullshit. Come on, man. Pull it together. KJ Dog Love says MRE's last decades. I don't think so. Look it up. I believe MRE's last one to five years. Be a jerk to Jim. He's delusional. Okay. <laughs> I try not to be a jerk to anybody. I try to be nice, you know, to everyone. You know what? I've never been at this point in the game at night. And I, I'm just now noticing that the the old man's, like, little lantern thing on the end of his stick lights everything up around it yellow. That's interesting. Huh. Nice Game Boy mug, dude. Thank you. Yeah, I got it at the actual Nintendo store in um, in New York City. Yeah, it's, it's a Game Boy. If you look closely here, as it heats up, it changes. It, it's got a little picture on it. I, I don't know if you can see the picture, but it's got... Uh, hold on. Let's see. Yeah, it's got... I think this is Mario... Super Mario Land for the Game Boy. It's the entrance or the opening screen. And then on the other side, we've got Mario finding Daisy, Princess Daisy. And he says, oh, Daisy. Because, you know, they retired Peach for a game and then brought her back. They retired Princess Toadstool for a game and then brought her back as Peach. Yeah. Heat changing mug. I, I like it, too. Forgot where I was going with this. MRE need to last a minimum of one to five years, but can be edible for decades after expiration. There you go. There's the answer. Yeah. One to five years, how long they last before they expire. But they, yeah, they have to be replaced. They don't have an expiration date. Their longevity is based on environmental temperature. That could be, but either way, they have to be replaced every so often for the military. And they're, they're sending them over to Ukraine as part of the aid package, basically, is the point. Uh, so the, and they're sending, you know, helmets, they're sending guns, they're sending all kinds of stuff. Do you know where the money's actually going? We're not sending that money to Ukraine. We're not, like, taking it in duffel bags and shipping it over to another country. We're spending the money here in America and giving it to Americans to manufacture bullets and guns and helmets and MREs and blah, 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 blankets and stuff. And then taking the things that Americans produced and were paid for and giving them to Ukraine to defeat a historical adversary. Our money could not possibly be better spent than it is on Ukraine. Same with NASA. It's like, do you think they're taking the money and like shipping it to Mars? Do you think that's what's happening? Do you think they're just like putting it in duffel bags and loading it onto a rocket and then shooting it at the moon or something? Like that money is not just going to space. It's going into the US economy. It's being used by Americans. And the technological advances we get out of the spending that we do with that money, it cannot be over or cannot be undervalued. Wait, what's the word? Wait, is it overvalued or undervalued? Cannot be overvalued. It is so incredibly valuable to the U.S. economy. But OK, yeah, just complain about Ukraine. Wonder why he's complaining about Ukraine, right? What a weird thing to be upset about and sad about. I wonder why QAnon would be so opposed to helping Ukraine. I have a pet theory that it's actually because QAnon is just an arm of the Russian propaganda network, honestly. I don't know if you guys remember, like, immediately after Russia invaded Ukraine, there was this groundswell of support for Ukraine. There was nobody supporting Russia. If they supported Russia, they kept their mouths shut in the United States. That's how it worked for like ever. You didn't say a word. You didn't talk about how Putin is innocent and he deserves to blah, blah, blah. You didn't do any of that. You just shut up and let things play out the way they were going to play out at the time. That's what happened for uh, at least a month after Russia invaded Ukraine. And then you start seeing, you know, things slip in. You start hearing people talk about how, well, you know, Putin's really not a bad guy and stuff. It took a while to work up to it. Just like with the January 6th people. You know, everybody was disgusted at what happened on January 6th. 
for a couple months. And then Trump and his propaganda network come in and they start working on it and massaging it a little bit and changing it and saying, okay, maybe they weren't so bad. You know what? Maybe I should have pardoned them. You know, they deserved a full pardon. They're innocent. They're they're prisoners of war. George Floyd, same thing happened with him. Anybody who's opposed to George Floyd kept their mouths completely shut. Didn't say a word for about a month. Didn't say anything. You get Nickelodeon putting up on their, uh, you know, their TV network or whatever. We're going to keep this screen black for nine minutes and 43 seconds. The length of time that George Floyd had a knee on his neck out of respect for somebody who didn't deserve to die. And everybody's completely silent. Everyone's like, okay, yep, that, that was bad. That was wrong. It was gross. Derek Chauvin is evil. He's bad. We don't identify with him. And then after a month, maybe two months, three months, you know, I heard that George Floyd maybe had like fentanyl in his system and kind of deserved to die. You know, slowly but surely, people gradually slip this stuff in and change the narrative into something absolutely grotesque and evil. Well, in the case of the Russian war, it didn't even take that long. This is literally how wh when did this video come out? This is one week, maybe two weeks at most after Russia invaded Ukraine. One to two weeks, okay? All those other times, it took months and months. We're one to two weeks into the invasion. Republicans are dead silent. All you hear is glowing support for Ukraine. And Delora O'Brien, QAnon, comes out on her channel on a program and, and she says this. Russia invaded Ukraine February 21st, I believe. And this happened early March, so about two weeks later. I'm not on Putin's side. She said before endorsing Putin. I'm not on, on Zelensky's side. I'm not on Trump's side. I'm on God's side. God's side is the side of truth. It just so happens that right now, our President Trump is on the side of God. He wasn't the president in 20, what, 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 when was this? Yeah, this is 2022. He wasn't the president. Also, believe it or not, so is Putin. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't believe it. Right before I came on here, this is what was sent to me. A Russian soldier. I even Remember, she's a QAnoner. This is a piece of QAnon propaganda she's about to lay on us. So she says a Russian soldier contacted her i guess why is she in communication with russian soldiers i don't know any russian soldiers a russian soldier i even have his name and i, c I can't give it i'm sorry i can't just research it i'm sure it'll start coming out you surprised to find that it never nothing about this ever came out um searching for bio weapons there was a him and a a, a few of his of uh, the other soldiers Oh. Here's another fascinating thing. Bioweapons, this claim about uh, Russia searching for bioweapons in Ukraine, this propaganda didn't come out until way later, or didn't get popularized until way, way down the line. Until, like months later, people started talking about you, um, Russia searching for bio labs in Ukraine that the U.S. is working on with Ukraine, blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's all nonsense. But you can see Putin spreading his tendrils through the QAnon network, right? Through the QAnon propaganda network. A searching for bioweapons in central Ukraine stumbled upon a child trafficking den. Ooh, and that's all you need to say to get QAnon invested. Child trafficking, right. Dimly lit, filthy bunker holding approximately a hundred young boys and girls this complete nonsense obviously all of it the point that i'm trying to make here is that QAnon is an arm of the russian propaganda network it just is always has been in my opinion so back to jim brewer he's going to tell us all about how much Zelensky sucks and how he loves putin and russia and he thinks they're just the best he needs more money. 
talking about Zelensky. Um, forgot where I was going with this. He's going nowhere. He was just going toward propaganda. That's it. That's where he was going. Yes. If it was me, I want to be. If I'm if I, if I'm going to dress in drag, I want to go to Vegas. I want to tour clubs. I want to go to Australia. I want to make money. I want to do it right. Where's your life at when you come home and go? You know what? I'm not doing UPS anymore. I'm going to dress like a hooker. Oh, okay. So he's saying. If he were to dress in drag, he says he would want to, like, go to Vegas and make it big and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, guess what, bro? Not everybody can make it big in Vegas. So sometimes we just got to do, you know, drag queen story hour at the local library instead. You think kids aren't being entertained by drag queens in Vegas? Apparently this guy doesn't have a problem with that, but he does have a problem with it at, like, local libraries or whatever where people are willingly choosing to go there and listen. And I'm going to dance in front of six year olds. I think there's a business here. Did I cross the line? He's so full of shit. It's ridiculous. The point is, even if you take COVID, Okay, I take COVID. Go on. We all, uh, many of us, many of us, we gave them that shot. I personally didn't. I didn't buy it from one second. I know people passed away, but... People did not pass away. Oh, my God, dude. Ugh. I saw a video recently of a woman who spread this entire idea that COVID was, or that um, the vaccine was killing people and, and maiming them and stuff. And this video spread through right wing circles like wildfire. It went across Facebook like mad. And it was fake. This woman was pretending to have seizures and stuff. And it convinced so many people that people were dying from the, um, you know, uh, from the vaccine and they were being maimed and, and everything else. Let me see if I can find it. Hang on. Oh, I have a video coming out in... Damn! I have a video coming out in an hour about Jehovah's Witnesses and beards. Lloyd Evans beat me by 21 hours. Son of a bitch. I really tried to bust that video out, too. All right. Oh, my God, dude. Okay. I wasn't sure if I was going to even bother with this one, but, yeah, all right. I'll pull this up. Check this out. Are y'all about done with this bullshit yet or not? I'm not talking about the ones that are trying to save other people. I'm talking about the ones that keep on getting in line, rolling their sleeves up and doing it over and over again because your TV is telling you and the yeah, white you're, are telling you. Yeah, you're so wrong. You're so evil for getting a vaccine. Come on, man. I want to show you something. This, this is a vaccine injury. An old man? An old man is a vaccine injury? He doesn't get his life back. And I'm here to tell you that the Canadian government lied, despite reassuring Canadians that shots were safe and effective. The Pfizer contract shows the government knew there was no long-term safety or efficacy data since at least October 20. Oh my God, they're so full of shit. All right, I, I have to download that, that clip. I have to get that clip. I'm going I'm to get that one. I'm going to add it to my clip collection. Let, let me see if I can find the other one that I was looking for. Um, there are a bunch of other ones, but where the hell is it? It's like this woman was pretending that her she had like what appeared to be like muscular dystrophy or something. And she pretended that it was caused by the vaccine. And she was just acting. It was fake. She didn't have any problems. She was perfectly fine walking around and stuff. Uh, it's extraordinarily important for the American people to know. Dude, why why are there Chinese subtitles on this? Oh, that listen, all there's an avalanche of data. This is no longer a theory. We have Denise. Oh my god, dude. 
What? There are like a billion videos with Chinese subtitles. What the hell? 1,150 people died on the day they were given the COVID vaccine, which was proven to be ineffective and harmful. Just complete bullshit. All of it. What is the, what is this even talking about? So you're telling me two billion COVID vaccines given and out of the I don't know what what's the percent what 70 percent of the 330 million people in the U.S. say let's be generous and say 200 million that's undershooting it dramatically let's just say 200 million people in the u.s got vaccinated 230 million 637,000 i was close 230 million out of 230 million people these these guys are saying 1,150 people died can you speak to them on the day that they got vaccinated really and again why the chinese subtitles is uh super nerd in the chat i'm not seeing super nerd that's super sad he must have gone and done something else damn He's my resident uh, Chinese speaker. He's Taiwanese and lives in Hong Kong and speaks Mandarin and I think some other dialects. NASA is taking all that money to make sure everybody believes the globe lie. I know. Oh, hey, Super Nerd is here. Can you read this? Do you know what this says? Or is, this is Chinese, right? It doesn't look like Japanese. I think Japanese looks more airy and Korean looks more boxy. This looks like Chinese to me. Am I wrong? Let me see if I can blow it up for you here. Is it, it is Chinese. Yes. Okay. The direct translation of the English. Oh, okay. It's an exact translation. Why is it in Chinese? Why do they have Chinese subtitles here? I don't understand. Can you speak to them for a moment, just to the scope, broadly speaking, again, because you're, you're um, reporting on and testifying on a whole broad host of issues of vaccine injury and, and death. Uh, how bad is the problem? in your mind right now for the vaccine injured or people who have been tragically killed by the vaccine or died suddenly died suddenly that's their whole phrase that's their catchphrase died suddenly god they're so full of shit and what will it take for the medical freedom community to to penetrate this blockade and really get in and, and push this issue in dude nobody is forcing you to get vaccinated there was never ever in the u.s a vaccine mandate okay into the mainstream of american discussion Let's take death um, uh, as, you know, the, obviously the, the, the ultimate outcome. Uh, our CDC is recognizing over 18,000 deaths after the vaccine, people who reported the deaths like me to the, uh, to the CDC VAERS system. Uh, the underreporting in FDA testimony uh, r ratio is, is- God, these people are full of shit. It's lying out their ass and for what? They are literally getting people killed by lying like this. Shut the fuck up. Shut all the way the fuck up until you reach the top of Shut Fuck Mountain where there are no more fuck ups to shut. Shut. Okay, I interesting. I like that. That's <laughs> that's an interesting one. I never heard that before. Wow, man. It does sometimes trick me and looks like kanji. What are we talking about? Simplified Chinese? They're targeting Chinese immigrants? That could be. That's possible, I suppose. I can see that. I don't know. Yeah, I guess that that could be. That's possible. Definitely Chinese contains no kana. All looks like matching the puzzle game to me from Chinese restream of the newscast. Oh, is that what it is? Chinese restream of the newscast? Anyway, all right, let's keep listening to the, the to Jim Brewer act like a nutcase and pretend that like the vaccine kills people. Just embarrassing, man. Seriously. We gave them that shot. I personally didn't. I didn't buy it from one second. I know people passed away, but... No, they didn't. It's completely made up. I think there were many reasons for that. No, this did not happen. The vaccine was perfectly safe, which is truly incredible because it was made so quickly. In record time, it was pushed out and it saved countless lives. It, it was a testament to mankind's scientific breakthroughs and technical capabilities the vaccine was you know what even if the vaccine had killed thousands of people it still saved millions of people it didn't kill thousands but even if it had it would have been better to take the vaccine than not
They kept us from seeing elderly. Who kept you from doing that? What are you talking about? Nobody kept you from seeing anybody. In our lifetime, like I got to hold my dad to his last breath many years ago. And I'm telling you right now, they're taking God out of her life. They're taking spirit out of her life. And they're attacking, they're attacking something deeper. Forget our intelligence. They're attacking our morality. That How are they attacking your morality? What? Comes from a deeper space than science or the experts. What the hell is he going on about? By the way, if you ever have someone in your life that is not going to be here, do your best to be there when they go. Because that's one of the greatest experiences that you ever have in your life. What's he talking about? He said, if you if there's someone who's not going to be here one day, then do your best to be in their life because it's a good experience. What? Okay. And I, I begged God my whole life that I would have that moment. My dad was a World War II vet. Um, he was in the Philippines for three years in World War II. Yeah. God, that sounds terrible. I wasn't. He was. Um... Matter of fact, all the brewers, they're, they're, there's kind of a mirror. It's almost the opposite of Private Ryan. I don't know if you knew about this, but five brewers went into World War II. All five, by miracle, came back alive. That is crazy. So many people died in World War II. My Uncle Robert was caught, prisoner of war, escaped. My Uncle Charles was shot down. He played a deaf mute. French Underground saved him. And I begged God my whole life, please, I'm begging you, please, don't let this man go alone. And how many of us had to watch someone go alone because these tyrants? Okay, it seems like if you're watching them go, then they're, by definition, not doing it alone, right? Aside from that, you didn't have to not be around the person you very easily could have been around and talked to them and hung out with them and chatted and and lived life with them in their final years if you wanted nobody's telling you not to do that what are you going on about what tyrant told you do not talk to your elderly father or whatever who tell me who it was jim these people that have taken over our lives, it's more than just our own government. It's more than just what's in control here. It's more than big pharmacy. It's bigger than that. It's not big pharmacy, all right? You're not conspiracying very well. It's big pharma, big pharma. Get it right. It's pure demonic evil takeover. And the minute you understand that, you will find the strength within to rise up and be fearless and understand what you're up against. It is time for the fearless. Fearless. Because I'm telling you, the greatest moment you can have, if you have that opportunity, I'll never forget it. Why, oh, I had my dad. And, I, you know, he didn't want it. He didn't, I knew he didn't want me there. He was holding on to his last breath. and I said, Dad, I, this is a true story. I said, Dad, I'm going to go shower. Don't try to sneak out on me. I know you want to go alone, but you ain't going alone. I'm holding you. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I got it. Wow, that's really sad. I'm sorry that Jim had to go through that. But you know what? Dude said the dad didn't want him there. Why didn't the dad want him there? It is absolutely not because he thought that he might get COVID from Jim. That is simply not true. I don't believe that for a single second. I'm assuming, maybe, question mark, that the dad completely fundamentally disagreed with Jim's extreme political position being a QAnoner as he is. Now, I called him a QAnoner in the video that he watched that I where I talked about him originally, and he said, QAnon? Now, I don't know anything about QAnon. Like, of course, everyone's heard of QAnon, but I, I don't know what a QAnoner is, and I don't, I'm not a QAnoner. 
I'm sorry, man. You are. Whether you know what QAnon is or not, you are a QAnoner. That's just what it is, bro. Talking about senior care facilities quarantining. Okay. Yeah, that did happen. Uh, you were allowed to visit. You just had to be careful. You had to prove to them that you were being very cautious and not careless with with your elderly family member's health, basically. That's it. When they're, yeah, when I mean, we I had family members that were in uh, elderly care facilities like um, assisted living, um, retirement home type of facility, you know, and I was allowed to go there. We just had to take turns. You know, we couldn't all go hang out with them together in like the rec room or something and have a party or whatever. You had to go in like one, two or three people at a time. You had to wash your hands and take hand sanitizer. You had to wear a mask. You had to be really, really careful. And even then, even then, the people we were trying to protect at that care facility, like the family members, they still got COVID. Not from us, not from any family members that I know of, but it swept through elderly care facilities. I don't know why it, it was so attracted to, like, older people. It just was. And it, it killed a lot of people that, that, that didn't need to die, that died younger than they should have and jim is complaining about all that you know what if your dad is on his deathbed you should be able to go sit with him hang out with him be with him in his last moments and his last weeks months years even but you should be responsible and not get anybody else killed in the process because you're being negligent and careless they're at that stage and i want to step back here don't try to sneak out on me. I know you want to go alone, but you ain't going alone. I'm holding you. And he was like, yeah, yeah, like that. I'm sorry to hear that for Jim. When they're, yeah, when they're at that stage. And I went, I went to go take a shower, and um, my daughter came up and said, Dad, Grandpa's, he's, he's, I think he's, he's waking up. But I know he wasn't waking up. He was coming towards the end. Yeah, sadly, I, I, I came to find out that people get a second wind when it's coming to the end, you know, like their body is no longer devoting energy toward trying to survive. And now it, it's it's been freed up for them to have that energy to use to look around and talk and be with people for a, another couple of minutes. That's it. That's all you got. A couple of minutes. And then that's it. When people start getting a second wind, when they're on, when they got one foot in the grave, one on a banana peel, if you will, that's when you know it's close. I've come to find. Dad, Grandpa's, he's, he's I think he's, he's waking up, but I know. By the way, for the record, I'm just, I want to point out what Jim's doing here, tugging at people's heartstrings and making them feel like they lost something at the hands of some ambiguous amorphous they some authority figure that is out to screw them over and prevent them from being around their family like why would anybody care to stop you from being around your dad honestly no he wasn't waking up he was coming towards the end and i went downstairs and he was taking those last breaths <gasps> and i got in there i'm like you sneaky dirty monkey you try to sneak out. I told you you ain't leaving when I'm in. I got in there, and I'm telling you, if you have this moment, don't ever fear it. It's the most beautiful, soul, godly experience you will ever have. And I'm holding him. Now, listen, it isn't easy because it's a little weird. I'm going to warn you. When the breath goes, oh, and then you go, eh, they come 20 seconds later with another, oh, come on. Ah! I, I've never... <laughs> okay, that's funny. I've never heard of that before. Oh my god, I thought he was gone. Sorry. I jumped the gun. My fault. He looked like he was gone. Was he not? <laughs> okay, that's kind of funny. <laughs> wow, that's really sad, though. I'm sorry Jim had to deal with that. I'm gone. See, that's funny, right? That's a funny joke. Jim can be funny sometimes. Twice he did that. He faked the breath. Not faked it, but I'd hold him. Oh, last breath. And now, eh, and he'd come back. <gasps> like, ah! 
The third time, like, you know what? Grab the pillow. I can't, I can't do this. I'm sorry. He's That's funny. <laughs> Grab the pillow, he says. That's good. See, I'm telling you. He's funny sometimes, right? I mean, it's dark. It's dark humor, but I find that funny. I'm totally A-OK -okay with dark humor sometimes. My mom showed me Rocky Horror as a kid. I'm fine. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. I watched Rocky Horror Picture Show a bunch. They had, um, uh, oh, my God, they had, like, it, it in Huntington, West Virginia, They it played at a theater, like, every Thursday night or Friday night or something, and there was a big group of people from my school that always went to see it on that night, and they dressed up and, you know, put on the makeup, and they drew the V on people's foreheads if it was like their first time because, you know, if you've never seen Rocky Horror Picture Show, you draw a V for Virgin and stuff like that. Uh, really entertaining. I, I did go to that once, but I didn't, you know, I didn't dress up or anything. That is fun. Anyways, uh, yeah. Thank you, Cade the Squirrel. That was interesting. I've seen it in movie theaters. Talking about uh, Rocky Horror. Lost count after 75 times. Has to be over 100, though. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I saw it once. Um... It was pretty entertaining. The toilet paper being thrown down the hall and everything. And yeah, really fun, um, fun thing to do, you know. Okay, let's keep listening here. Last breath and now, and they come back. <gasps> I'm like, ah! The third time, like, you know what? Grab the pillow. I can't, I can't do this. I'm so that's funny, honestly. I think that's funny. I've never had to deal with that situation. I've never been up close and personal. I've lost people, but never been there before, you know. Sorry, he's going anyway. I, I, I can't take this anymore. I mean, not for nothing, but this coming from a pro-lifer, right? <laughs> That's a good joke, in my opinion. Solid joke from Jim. See, this is what I'm talking about. Most of the time, he's preachy, and, you know, his set is just stupid, and... Not even funny. He's just like talking and saying really stupid stuff. But every now and then you get something that genuinely makes you laugh, in my opinion. <laughs> it's a true story. I didn't. I mean, I'm sure it's a true story, but and I'm sure he felt that way. I'm sure it was really hard to deal with, you know, um, losing somebody like on the spot like that i'm sure that was very hard and i'm sorry you had to go through that and you know what and on top of all that i'm glad that he could find the humor in it i think that finding humor in painful experiences is helpful <laughs> it's a true story i didn't use the pillow but he's funny right but when he went it was it was beautiful i had closure it was awesome Sadly, closure is not real. Um, people always talk about, I want closure. I want to be able to be at peace with this and blah, blah, blah. It's not real. That doesn't happen. Okay? You think that you, you talk to that old girlfriend one more time, you're going to feel better about it. You're going to have that peace, that closure. No, you're not. You're not. It's simply not going to happen. You just don't get closure. It's not a real thing. You feel like it is. You feel like if you just had one more moment to talk, everything would be better. It just doesn't happen that way. It simply doesn't. And I tell you, life is awesome. And I'm just going to beg you one thing. As this new year comes, they already try to divide you by your sexuality, by your race, by the guns. They by the gun? They try to divide you by the guns? What? No one's trying to divide anybody by anything. Except... Me trying to divide your mom. That's about it. I don't know what he's talking about. They try everything. Go to this war. Support that war. Support this. Stop buying into it. Yeah, I don't buy into it. I don't support any war. Zero war. No war. Stop. Stop fighting. Putin should stop fighting in Ukraine. Israel should stop fighting uh, Palestine. People should leave other people alone. Let them live their damn lives. Stop hating each other. Stop attacking each other. Stop hurting each other. Absolutely agree. Now, I wonder, does Jim feel the same? Does he agree with that sentiment? Does he think that people should stop fighting 
in Russia? Does he think that Ukraine should be left alone? Does he think that Israel should leave Palestine alone? Israel and Russia are the aggressors in these situations. So stop aggressing. Simple as that. My spouse, Ralph, and I were together for 25 years, nine and a half years illegally married. He died of kidney disease December 19th, 2019. I doubt I will ever get over it. Yeah. Like I said, closure is fake. It's not a real thing that people have. You know, it's not a real thing you can accomplish. You feel like you, you feel like you can. You chase it. You're never going to catch it. But like I've said to you before, Nerico, I mean, for what it's worth, which is exactly what you paid for it. Uh, you know, Ralph will live on in other people's memory and and other people's lives and the personality that he had and the opinions that he held and the you know, traditions that he practiced and all that stuff that will all continue on through you and others that cared about him. Oh, true. Just that I miss him so much this time of year. I know. Yeah. I, December 29th, hadn't even thought about that. Yeah, that makes sense. Wow, that's got to be rough. Right around that time of year, too. I hadn't even thought about it. Yeah, my dad's birthday was December 28th. And, you know, I have my problems with my dad, but... Uh, people probably seen the video I put out long ago when it happened on my channel. But, uh, you know, when somebody dies, you pretty much just... Like, any grievances you had, what's the point in holding them anymore? Just walk away, you know? It's over. That's the way that I always felt about it. Of course, no grievances in Ralph's case, but my dad, you know, there were definitely grievances. And I've noticed that there are, there's like a different, um, losing somebody that you had a grievance with is a different experience than losing somebody that you didn't have a grievance with, interestingly enough. Like, I lost my grandmother. I didn't have a grievance with her at all. That, uh, that was terrible. I lost my dad, and I did have a gr grievance with him. It, it, it's just different. It's a different experience, you know. All right, let's keep listening to uh, Jim here. They try everything. Go to this war. Support that war. Support this. Stop buying into it. Right now, someone in here has just been diagnosed. They're not going to be here for a while. In here right now, someone just found out that their kid is going to be autistic and they're going to be taking care of him the rest of their life. You know what's sad about what's, what Jim is saying right now? This is all probably true, except he's blaming it on the vaccine. He's saying they, somebody in this room found out their kid's going to be autistic. They have to take care of him the rest of their life because of the vaccine. That's what he's saying. That's nonsense. And it's truly, deeply disgusting that he'd spread that garbage. Right now, right in here, someone just went through a horrible divorce. And that person is right next to you. And they're in front of you. And they're in back of you. And until we unite... Oh, they're behind me. ...with love... And God sells and ignore the demon. Wait, God sells? What the hell is a God sell? And we start at home and we start with each other. That's the only way we're going to survive. And we use that strength as we move forward. Because we're in trouble, but we ain't dead. You need to be fearless. Believe in the God inside you and let it rise and let it shine. Thank you. I can appreciate the inspirational message. I mean, there was some nonsense mixed in there, but yeah, I, I, I appreciate that, I suppose. For allowing me to speak tonight. I love you. Thank you. He's getting a standing ovation, huh? Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I got to say, uh, Jim Brewer, in my opinion, really nice guy. Really nice guy. And really funny, but so sucked into propaganda world, I don't even know what to do with it. Convinced that the COVID vaccine is like taking people out and convinced that people told him not to be around. Like he says, I, you know, people didn't want me to be around my dad. What are you talking about? You, you were around your dad. Nobody told you you're not allowed to be around your dad. I mean, they might've told you you have to be careful. All of this is just nonsense, man. 
holy mackerel Owen scared me I thought the orange cues were sneaking up behind him <laughs> right <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, that's Jim Brewer. Jim Brewer is a really, really funny guy from time to time and, and very interesting. I just wish that he wasn't such a QAnoner, honestly. That's, that's really sad to me. Anyway, yeah. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. It was an interesting set, all things considered. Um, I just wish that he was a little, you know, more attached to reality than this. Sorry that he had to deal with that with his dad and everything, but come back to reality, bro, please. I'm begging you. It's less insane on this side of the fence over here. It's less scary and ridiculous and psychotic over here. So come on. Come, come over here with us. Yeah, tell me what you think.